Okay, so I am speaking today with Lolly Galvin. And Lolly, you, just like myself and my crew, are traveling the United States right now. And you are doing something called the Dignity Tour. And it's a dignity project that you have going on. Can you explain that to everybody? Yeah, for sure. So um, you want me to explain what the tour is? is yeah, that like what, what your passion is and what the tour is all about. Well, um, the tour, you know, the tour came out of the Dignity Project, which came out of me just kind of um, playing around on an app called Periscope. And then I wanted to reach a goal of $500 for random acts of kindness. And to be perfectly honest, it was a ripple effect of just, um, you know, people giving. And I started sharing the stories more. And uh, before I knew it, I had like $2,000 and I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, you know in a very short time and it became a uh, nonprofit about um, two months ago. And then when I got to um, $5,000, I introduced the idea of going on a tour, you know, across country to um, do what I do now, which is give out dignity bags and share stories and take photos. And that's kind of, and then it became the dignity tour. So that's kind of how it happened. What does the dignity bag, what, what do they consist of? Well, you know, um, at home, I pre-make the bags when I'm on the road. Um, you know, it's whatever you want. I basically make you up a bag um, of whatever you need. So it can consist of anything from shampoos to nail clippers to, um, you know, in the, in the freezing cold of winter in, in Philadelphia where, I'm, where I live, you know, there's hand warmers, um, toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant, socks, always socks. Um, and tampons for women. So just actual like basic necessity toiletries. And then um, if you've been looking on the Instagram, I've also been doing some food as well. I'm sorry if my GPS gets on there. Um, some food as well where I've been. So, um, and that's because I have like some groups helping me in each city. So. So which city are you in right now? I am leaving Seattle and I am heading towards Montana. You are probably going to drive right past us we're currently in washington we're in kennewick oh okay that's awesome i, I like i saw that you guys are traveling i was like that's so cool you're you're traveling very close to me so yeah yep we're passing you we just came from montana that's awesome i'm you know montana has been on my bucket list for quite some time just like the beauty of it and everything being an east coaster it's i see pictures and i'm like i need to be there but um we're there just one day um you know, most stops have been two days, but at the end, it's kind of dwindled down to one day. So, yeah, I'm excited. You and I are both from the East Coast. Oh, yeah. Where are you from? Yep. Tom's River. Oh, I'm from New Jersey, too, girl. Yep. Um, I'm from Atlantic, uh, right outside of Atlantic City, Absecon. So. I saw that. I saw that on your Instagram. It said Absecon. Yeah. I'm like, Absecon? Yes. So you're less than an hour from me is Absecon, just so everybody yeah. knows. So, okay, you got this idea and you went out on this tour and what's your main goal when you return from this tour? Um, you know, I don't really have, and I know this sounds crazy because like the world is so goal oriented and you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but for me, this has all come up so like naturally and organically. I just feel like, um, you know, people, I got an outpouring of messages from people and so much support. So, um, my, my like day to day will be exactly what I've done on the tour just at home. Um, I don't necessarily have a goal. My goal is just to continue to, you know, give and spread some love out there and, you know, maybe change a couple minds or two. And, you know, to be very honest with you, I get so many messages from people who say, you know, I was homeless and it shocks me every single time, you know, or I lived in a car for a year and homelessness doesn't always look like the people that I am showing in my photos, you know. So I'm just trying to give a voice and some awareness. I mean, it's been shocking on the West Coast, and I'm sure as you travel, you see the same thing. Maybe not, you're not as hyper focused on it, but I mean, when you travel and you you look, it's it's unbelievable. So I, I don't, you know, I don't know if I necessarily have a goal. It's just to show, you know, um, what's happening in our country and you know what people are experiencing. So. Well, you know, we were actually, or I should say, I was turned on to you because one of my crew members, Cassie, her sister is very into following you on Instagram and your progress. And, Hello, Cassie's sister. <laughs> and um, Cassie actually has a couple questions that she'd like to ask you. Yeah, right on. Go she, so go ahead, Cass. Okay. These are actually some questions that my sister gave me for you. She would like to know 
if there was a particular exchange with someone who was homeless or some other event in your life that made you want to reach out to the homeless and as your priority? Yeah, that's a great, um, and this is Cassie I'm talking to? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Cassie, that's a great question from your sister. Um, you know, a lot of people think that I set out to, you know, do this with homeless people. And that actually, if I'm being completely honest, was not the case. I wanted to do a random act. And my first act was random acts of kindness. And the first act I did when I reached the humble goal of $500 was I took a homeless guy out to lunch. And his name was Tom. And I, I broadcasted it live on Periscope. And people got to ask him questions. And, you know, he was just so endearing and so honest and vulnerable. And, um, you know, for weeks after that, people asked about Tom, you know, and I did some other acts here and there, but I kept being, you know, drawn back to homeless, you know, the homeless people I was meeting and, you know, their, their stories and, you know, some of the comedic stories and some of the tragic stories as well. So, um, it's not something, you know, I feel for everyone, but it was not something that I set out to do, but now it is a, uh, like a huge passion of mine. So what's cool about it is it just kind of came, you know, and um, a story ran, it said, now, now uh, Lolly Alvin operates a nonprofit she never intended to start, which I think is such a good description of this. It just kind of became, so I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I can relate to that concept. What else, Cass? Did your upbringing encourage or discourage your work? That's a great question. Um, well, <laughs> so when I was like 17, I'm from a small, uh, you know, um, Epsikin, I'm from a small town. There's no homeless people there at all. Um, my upbringing was like very comfortable in New Jersey suburb, extremely comfortable. Like I didn't, I didn't see these kinds of things. And, and uh, when I got my license, I saw like the, I probably the first homeless person in Epsikin and I gave her my house number. And my family, I came home and they were like, are you crazy? I'm like, some lady might call. She needs some help, you know. Um, you know, it's not that my family was not, you know, they, they were very much, um, especially, you know, when I was younger as well as high school into like service and, you know, um, helping people. But I was not encouraged to necessarily like help homeless people. And I think that that something that's really cool for me now that I'm, you know, in my early thirties and I go out with children. I don't know if you've seen on the Instagram, especially in San Francisco, um, a woman named Amy brought out her sons. And I think that's a beautiful thing to see because there's so much fear surrounded in this. And if you come and do a give, you can see that it's not, um, it's not that way. And it's a lot of beautiful moments. So, um, I encourage people to bring their kids out. Um, but I was not necessarily encouraged to do this, but I wasn't discouraged. So pretty much neutral on that front. Cool. Um, are there any other social issues that you're passionate about? Oh my God, you have an hour? <laughs> um, <laughs> short, no, I mean, I'm passionate about a lot of social issues. Um, you know, like I just like to read up on what's going on and, and see what's going on and learn about the way people, you know, what, what interests me most about this project is the psychology of it from the person on the street to the person who reads it. So um, there's a lot of social issues that um, I care about, but I, I just like to learn how people tick. And really, um, there's nothing, you know, hugely specific. I, I kind of dabble in everything. So, but the reason that I think homelessness connects people is because most questions I get are, I'd love to do what you're doing, but how do I start, right? Like, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that the person's going to, like, jump me or, or I'm afraid that the person's going to reject me or make me feel uncomfortable or whatever. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm mostly just trying to show people that we don't have to live so, like, fearful of each other and we can connect on, like, a human level with people from all different walks of life. And I think that's important to step out of your bubble and, and connect with people that are you know, different from you, you know, and, you, and, and, and on that note too, you know, a lot of people ask me, have I experienced homelessness? And I think it's important also to demonstrate, you don't need to experience something to, um, you know, give to that or to, uh, oh, and, and Rez, I'm talking to you, I'm passing, look at this right here. Put, we pull over there, uh, tent city. It's unbelievable. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, it's, um, I don't think you need to experience something to care. So I care about a lot. What city are you in right now? Where are you right now? I am actually, and this is crazy because I'll tag you guys in this. I am passing a tent city. It's called Tent City 7. It says state of emergency. Did you get that shot? Um, and I'm right outside of Seattle, which interestingly enough, 
um, going up the East Coast, California, San Francisco, L.A., Venice. I mean, it was unbelievable. There was less homeless people up here. Um, but, I mean, I'm telling you, I can't leave a Walmart parking lot where I'm going and restocking on socks without someone being out there. And it's it's pretty alarming um, how many people are living in this situation. I was I was very taken back by this. Skid Row will blow your mind, did it? Girl, Skid Row was like, so it was interesting because uh, I went with my best friend lives in, has moved to Vegas and she, she drove out and we went through Skid Row and we were like, wow. I mean, yeah, it blew, it blew my mind, you know, and it's, I'll be honest with you due to safety measures. I, I, I wasn't able to get out of the car. There was so few of us. And um, I know there's groups to go out there with 50 people and they do amazing work. You know, I have to there's a lot of tension, a lot of anger, a lot of despair, a lot of addiction in Skid Row. But yeah, I mean, it's like, have you been there? I just want to say before Cassie answers for everybody who's not aware, Skid Row is in L.A., Los Angeles, so mm-hmm. in California. Yeah, I live yes. in L.A. Yes, and Skid I Row used to is, live okay. uh, right outside of Skid Row. Oh, OK. Yeah. So, you know, so it's like going through a third world country and it's unbelievable, you know, and um They've tried so many measures. You know, I don't really get into, like, the legislative part, but um, a lot of people have sent me articles. They've tried so many measures, and apparently now it's at its worst, so it's pretty sad to see. Yeah, there's even um, a guy who is renting a tent out in Skid Row on Airbnb. What do you think about that? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Wow, like, he's his tent? Yeah, I mean, he's not a homeless man. He's just, like, using the opportunity... I don't oh. know to like show that type of lifestyle for. I, I don't know why. I don't know why he's doing it. I, yeah, it no, I'll, mind, to, I'll but... totally like look into that. That's pretty cool. Thank you for telling me that. I think it's, you know, I think it's cool. I'm gonna be honest. Like, I would not do that because, um, you know, I'm a woman, and, and and there is a difference. You know, like like for example, I take photos all the time. Everyone I take a photo of and I share their story. They're like, I ask their permission. They share. You know. In Skid Row, you so much as lift up your cell phone and you get, like, people screaming at you. So um, I don't know what that particular situation is. But, um, you know, at the same time, when I was driving by, I saw a photographer going right up to people who he must have been cool with. And, you know, people in 10 cities are protected. It's protective. It's their community. It's where they live. A lot of times maybe they think you're making fun of them. Well, that's obviously completely the opposite. I'm just trying to show Um what can happen but i don't know if you guys saw my instagram in texas and in portland they have some amazing tiny house communities that are coming out Mm -hmm. which um really blew my mind and uh i got a tour of both of those and it was it was kind of the opposite of the skid row mentality which is you know help these people and give them a place to live it's not that way so that was interesting for me as well i think cassie has one last question for you yeah sure yeah how do you balance your self-care and your work I don't (laughs) I'm gonna be honest with you Cassie this trip has been you know it's like I think that I can like you know and I'm pretty low maintenance but I'll tell you something like this is like my fourth day without a shower my showers are at truck stops you know and this is nothing to complain of compared to what the people um that I'm helping live with every day but you know a couple nights ago I was woken up in three different parking lots and moved and this is what these people experience all the time and it 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 does take a toll on you even in a short time so for people that live this way for um years i can't imagine but you know for this trip i knew that i wasn't going to have you know much time for self-care or anything like that i'm i'm literally barely even seeing the cities um but that wasn't my goal for this my goal was to give and to see and to to go to these places with that in mind so i'll do some self-care you know it sucks because I haven't been able, I brought my yoga mat, which was completely naive of me. You know, I thought I'd have time for that sort of thing, which is not at all. Um, but when I get back, I'll do some self care. I've at least really ate well. Like, you know, I've been making sure that I'm eating, you know, all my veggies and such. So, um, yeah, I'll be honest, like the self care aspect does not exist on this trip, but that's, that's actually part of the growing experience and part of what I'm trying to demonstrate to myself as well. So cool um one last question um yeah. if you weren't doing this what else would you be doing i would be owning retail stores like i used to and selling dresses and um jewelry which um was an amazing time in my life but um you know i did that for eight years and i wanted to travel and i wanted to do something with a purpose 
and something that, um, you know, I know that, you know, I walked away from like financial gain, but I've also been, you know, your mind changes a lot. You learn to live with less and um, you, I, you have such perspective. And to me, for me personally, that's more important. Um, not that I would take back what I did prior, but, um, you know, it's given me a whole new way of looking at life. And, you know, it's, it's also opened my eyes up, you know, like, like I said, you know, when I wake up in the morning and I'm uncomfortable or, you know, I, I don't look cute, you know, like I'm, I'm learning about myself that I still have ways to evolve. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been a, quite a mindset shift for me. Lolly, how many days is your trip? Um, 30 days, 30 days. And what day are you on now? Oh, I couldn't even tell you. <laughs> oh, trust me, sister. We're with you. We are with you. Our, you know, cause our, we're going to all 50 States. And um, our trip is 88 days long, and I don't know what wow, what day we're awesome. on either. <laughs> I don't know what, we, you know, we're going around interviewing people who have passions, just like you. You are so passionate about what you're doing. So that's why when we found out that, hey, this girl's on this tour, and so are we, and she's so passionate about what she's doing, that's why we reached out. And when, once we get to Seattle, we're going to Alaska from there. Oh, wow. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's a perfect mountain. You know, 30 days for this is very, very rushed. But you know what? And that's part of the reason why I am because I'm like, I have to wake up in the morning. I need to get these sandwiches made, you know? Um, and I, I think that it's, it's rushed in 30 days and I hope you guys get a little bit more time, but that's amazing that you guys are traveling too. And I think the travel aspect and meeting different, you know, groups of people and, um, as, as Instagram, um, grows for me, you know, I get different takes on what I'm doing and, um, different perspectives. And I just try to really learn, you know, like I'm trying to be like a student as well as, as showing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy to like, to be doing this in 30 days, but I, Alaska is on my list as well. Yeah. But something you said that really stood out to me too, is the fact that your focus is not on yourself. Your focus is not on visiting cities. Your focus is not on all of these other things. Your focus is on your purpose of why you're on this trip. And that's how I feel the same way. And, you know, I think my, my crew also, you know, our job is to really be present with the people we're speaking with and the people we're visiting with and the experiences we're having and, um, and, you know, self care, those things, they, it, it comes last right now, but you know, it's only 88 days, you know, like, and for you, it's a month, yeah. I mean, you know, it's a month. So I think Chelsea has a question too. Just come on. Okay. So I, I've done some work with the homeless as well. Uh, I've actually spent some time on the street in San Diego and, and I, you said you were in San Diego or Seattle, Seattle. No, uh, when you've right gone. Oh, have you been to, did you say you went to San Diego? I did not in California. I went to LA, um, Palm Springs. I went through Al uh, Arizona and where, where, uh, San Francisco too. Okay. Yeah. So I guess. And Oakland, which was also, wow. Yeah. It was wild. I used to work in Oakland. So oh. I, yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. So I guess, and that kind of sparked my interest. And I actually brought that home. Um, when I went back to Billings in Montana, uh, I worked with the St. Vincent de Paul and some of the stories that I have, I mean, just absolutely changed my life. What, I know there's probably a ton, but what is one story that just absolutely has um, stuck with you? Stuck with you? Yeah. See, there's been so many at this point. It's hard. There's been like you know people who have told me, you know, I'm homeless because my house burnt down, or I got a divorce, or I think what really hits me the most is just how close many of us are to homelessness. You know, um, and like there's a guy I was featured on the Philadelphia news, um, a news channel there. And this guy, he just, he was a chef. He was doing really well. And he came down with a sickness. And in that industry, as you guys, I'm sure know, you sound like smart travelers, you know, like there's no, um, there's no sick days. There's no health insurance for this time. You're, you're done. You know what I mean? And he, he was in the hospital for a significant amount of time. I believe it was two months and he just fell back on everything. And I hear so many stories of just, falling back on things, you know, and, and then once you get to a certain point, it's, it's very, people don't understand, you know, I get the comments on Instagram once in a while, I'll get a job, those sort of things. 
But people don't understand, you know, when you reach a certain low, how hard it is to come back up from there. Um, and, and what really sticks with me the most is the commonality that, you know, these people don't have anyone to fall back on. So, you know, how you or I, if something happened, we could move in with family or, you know, a, a significant other or whatever it may be. You know, when you have no one, you end up on a street. I mean, like, that's kind of what happens. And um, that it's just it's just sad. You know, it's sad. A lot of the stories I hear and a lot of the people, but not just in bad ways, you know, like like the guy I took a video of that just kissed the socks I gave him was just jumping up and down. I mean, I also have those moments of just pure joy and like gratitude. So, so it touches me in both ways. But working in shelters, I'm sure I don't work with any shelters at all. I'm sure you see like a, a, some really terrible things happening there. Lolly, what would you say your greatest challenges are while you're out there doing this? Uh, my greatest challenges is like not feeling, feeling like I don't have enough things to give. And that is something that I've had to like talk myself down out of because I literally am like this one person. And then, like I said, people come and do help, but I have to be realistic. You know, I'm not, my journey is not to end homelessness. My journey is to bring people together, to realize we're more like then we are different. And so I start to get caught up in my head. Like, no, I need to get more. I need to give more. I can't, you know, I've had to pull away from certain tent cities or certain blocks where I see, you know, I only have 50 care bags and there's 150 people sitting outside of a place, you know? So in the beginning that would like, you know, be like a lot for me, but now I just realize like, I just give what I can and I have to be more, um, I have to be more mindful of what I can do myself and, um, and the fact that you're, and the fact that you're raising awareness. Yeah. 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 And, you know, getting people to just see that these people are so similar to them and, um, not so, you know, I think there's, like I said, the stigma is very intense, but I've had some conversations with these people that are just so intelligent and, um, it's just, it's, it's interesting because there's no, you know, it's not a certain race. It's not a certain gender. It's just, it's just stories and, and life experiences. And you can't really peg down a person who's going to end up on the streets, you know? So what do you think you've learned most about yourself? Um, most about myself, I think I've learned that um, I was very privileged. I think we all are. Even people who don't think that they're privileged are highly privileged. Um and I say this, you know, because it's unbelievable seeing the amount of poverty that exists in America um, and just kind of despair, actually, which is sad. You know, so I I learned about myself. I'm very fortunate. I can't really complain about many things. And I, I don't I've, I've never been like a negative person, but I'm much more highly attuned to the fact that like, you know, when I have to go and run to the store and I don't want to at a certain time, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to do that or I had a really breakthrough moment um, in January where it was freezing um, in Philly and it was snowing and, you know, I was starting to get like frustrated because I'm like, I'm, I'm going to give every single person this, but I'm freezing my feet are, you know, and I'm going home to shower, you know, like it's those moments um, that I've learned about myself is that I, I need to be more appreciative of all the things that we take for granted all the time, you know, and we, we just get used to them and that's a way of life. And, when somebody says, oh, you have, an, you have an extra deodorant, you know, wow, like that just, you know, and I complain about lines when I'm getting coffee or I'm impatient for a line. Do you understand? Like, it just gives you a whole different perspective on the way that you carry yourself, on the way that you treat people around you. And it gives you more um, compassion towards other people, you know, and that's why when I get judgment on Instagram about certain people, I don't know if you, you guys should check this when um, you get a chance about the pregnant woman, you know. Um, that really invokes a lot of emotion in people, but I can look at it as an ex external way and just kind of see, you know, I don't know her story. I don't know what it's about. I'm just documenting something, but, um, you know, a lot of people feel strongly without really knowing the root or the cause of, of people's issues. So, yeah, I totally, I guess I'm more tolerant, from. you know? Yes. Yes. So, you know what, on my show, I'm always about helping people act to do something that's going to make their lives either more exciting or more meaningful. And my advice to them 
is to envision something for yourself first, explore what it would take to make it happen, and then execute a plan. So for anybody who would want to take their passion in a way similarly to what you've been doing, what kind of advice would you give them? So, okay, so you, okay, so I'm going to take it in the opposite direction you just took it. I think that's awesome, your plan, and doesn't make it, my plan is a little different. I would say show your passion, let the plan, use social media. I'm a big, firm believer of social media, right? So when I started um, bouncing this off people, you know, they gave me the feedback. They gave me the donations. They gave me the, hey, do this, don't do this, or show more of this. Um, And then the plan kind of came for me. This is just my experience. So if you have a passion and you have a social media base, it doesn't matter if you have, when I started this, I had like 200 Instagram followers. Um, or just Facebook friends, you know, if you authentically have a passion for something, people are really drawn to that and they will support you in, in those endeavors. And I think that you can, um, you know, of course you have to plan to some extent. I mean, this whole, and you guys know the whole trip I'm sure for you guys is planned. Am I correct? Yeah. I mean, for the most part, but a lot of it, um, is planned, but you know, there's also things that we can't predict and things that we've you know, that yeah. we're adding to as we go. And, you know, it's, right, it's, right. it's a living, breathing thing, our itinerary. Right. I love that. Living, breathing. I love that. Absolutely. And that's how I feel like the Dignity Project is. It's living and breathing. So it's, it is planning for sure, but like also some room for it to live and breathe. Love it. Um, and kind of, you know, if something takes me somewhere else or, you know, um, it takes me in a different direction, I'm open. I'm open to that as well. So I would just say, you know, show your passion, but also like, I'll be very honest with you, like, and you guys know this too, to, for you guys to be doing this for 80 days, you have to do a lot of work behind it. You know, there's days I was exhausted and I had to post every day. I had to be out there every day before I did this for two months, every single day I was posting about this. I was putting in like full-time job hours to do this. So, you know, you, passion is great, but it is, it is some work too. So yeah. Oh yeah. It is a lot of work, but it's weird. It doesn't feel like work, right? Yeah, no, exactly. It's like, it's like, you know, a a purposeful work. So it's like a labor of love, but I mean, you know, you need the passion and you need the intention behind it to actually follow through because I think why I was able to raise the $13,000 to do this originally was a $10,000 goal is because I was showing people like, Hey, I'm willing to do this every day and I am willing to take this on the road. And people believed me, you know, because I was authentic and it came from the heart. And I think when you do something from the heart and you demonstrate that, you know, it's amazing. I mean, people, people made this whole thing happen for me. So that's really cool for me. That's awesome. So one last question, who's yeah. driving the van? <laughs> Nicole, Nicole is driving the van. Um, so it's an interesting story when, uh, she is my wife. And when we were discussing this, um, I was kind of going back and forth with her in the beginning. I didn't tell her or any of my family members about this. Like when I had a smaller goal. And then one day I introduced her to this idea and, um, luckily she is a psychologist, um, and she has her own practice. So she was able to leave for a month and I told her about it. She's like, we're going. Um, so it's her and I basically on this together and the people that come out in, in the city, some cities that have a bigger showing than others. Um, it's a bummer because during the, um, during the week, um, a lot of people couldn't come out cause of work, but yeah, she's, she's like the driver and, um, she's getting really into this as, as it goes on. I don't know. She's like, I wish I could quit and do this full time. I mean, it, it really does take a hold of you in a way. So, um, yeah, she's a big support and help to me. That's amazing. That's amazing that you guys can share this together. Yeah. It's amazing because like I said, you know, I, I kind of kept it from her not in like a creepy, I'm keeping this from you way, but I didn't know if this was something, you know, because like I, there was like a little bit of doubt and then it started to grow. And um, yeah, but see, but see, Lolly, that's where I'm at with that whole envisioning thing is you were wearing it for a little bit for yourself first before you were prepared to fight for it. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I was wearing it and I was like, wait a minute, is our people really? And, you know, like I'm a big believer. I'm one of those people people think are like naive and like, you know, I think everyone's good at heart. And I believe this in my core. You know, and when it came to the time, this just reinstated the ripple effect and the fact that I think people really are hardwired to do good things. They just sometimes like, you know, don't 
want to do it themselves. And it doesn't mean that they're like lazy or whatever, you know, a lot of people just don't have the personality to go up to a stranger and talk or they feel uncomfortable. I mean, in San Francisco, I'll be honest, I had an experience. I was talking to this guy and I looked down and he was actually injecting heroin in our conversation. I'm sorry if I'm not allowed to say this on your channel, you can exit it out, but no. that's real life. Wow. And I was like, whoa, like, you know, that was a, that was a moment for me. Like, wow, uh, very real. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's been a journey and it's like, I'm learning about myself and I'm lucky enough to have someone on the road with me. I'm also with my dog and my cat that you saw. Yeah. And, uh, we've been living in a van. So, uh, it's, it's, it's all been kind of, what, what are you, how are you guys traveling? We are traveling in a minivan and it's, oh, okay. yep. We have three people. It's full. But we're staying with people all over the country. So, like, right now, I've been taking up the kitchen for my friend's house, and he is preparing a Memorial Day barbecue right now. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, it's cool. I did I did that as well with some people on the road, like, you know, use the shower and stuff like that. But with because of, like, my pets, you know, like, my boys, I'm a little attached. So, at night, like, I sleep with them. Um, and it's it's been fine. Like, everyone told me, Park, you can park in Walmarts no matter what and <laughs> that's not really the case anymore and we've had a ticket or two but um that's cool <laughs> that you guys are staying with people as you travel I think that's awesome yeah it's been great so listen I just want to thank you so much for connecting with us on the road this has oh, been, been awesome and I want to keep up to, uh, like with what you guys are doing is is really cool too I mean it's it's going to be such an adventure. So I want to keep in touch and see what you guys are up to as well. Yeah. You can find us on Instagram to motivate me with Lynette Renda. And you can find us, we have a, a Facebook page with the same name and a private Facebook group too. So you okay, can follow yeah. us and we've been putting uh, YouTube videos out of different things that we've been doing. So we've been experiencing something new in each of the 50 States that we've never done before. So we're, we have more what, of those to what put is out. It, you're like, you're stopping and just seeing like cool things. Like what is well, we're, we are going around the country interviewing people about their passions, number one. Right. Right. And, and while we're there, we're experiencing something we've never done before. So let's say like in Idaho, we were in the hot springs. We've never done that. Right, right. So I love that. Yeah. In uh, Montana, we did a couple things that we've never done before. One was zip lining. I've never zip lined. Oh, um, cool. Yeah. And it was a massive course. It was really cool. In Indiana, Indiana um, I was herding sheep with a, <laughs> a border collie. Oh, I love that. So yeah. that was a lot of fun. And we kicked off the tour with a professional football player, Dan Carpenter, who taught me how to kick a football. So oh, this sounds, see, and you know what? I really, you know, I love that you're taking the time because one thing, you know, like I said, due to, you know, some more constraints, it would be, that's the one thing that we said we would have added to this, just some time to do some like cool things in a state that we've never done. So that is like amazing for me to hear. So I'll live through you on that. It's awesome. So I, I think you guys are awesome. Like I really like your story. So. Thank you so much. And we love what you're doing. And we are so glad that we could hear from you and put it out to our listeners. Yeah, cool. I'll do a post on you guys for sure. And I appreciate you taking the time. Be safe. Enjoy your journey and um, keep doing what you're doing. All right. You as well. Have a good one. Okay. Thank you so much, Lolly. Sure. Bye. Bye. And I talk to you, 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 and we love, we love, and we hate, we hate, and we tap and run straight, we try to relate, this is for breakthrough.